Proclaim a joyful sound and let it be heard. Proclaim to the ends of the earth, the Lord has freed his people. Alleluia. Alleluia. This Mass is offered for all the people in the collaborative, living and deceased. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning Mass. We welcome parishioners of St. Jude and also St. Edward in our collaborative and any other communities that you are joining us from. We welcome those joining us through the media and from our parking lot on FM radio. And a happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. We'll have a, a blessing for mothers at the end of Mass. Dear friends, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The psalm, let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all on earth worship and sing praise to you. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. Blessed be God who refused me not 
my prayer, or his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him and we will come to him. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's Gospel passage, Jesus has begun to say, if you love me. It's as if he's asking, do you love me? And he's reminding his disciples that they have many reasons to love him. And so he's saying, if you do love me, and you do, keep my commandments. But there's an implication here that the love of the disciples is about to be put to the test. Jesus is going to his death, and he's going to be departing. And so his disciples must remember that love isn't just something we feel. Feelings come and go. Great love is steadfast and unconditional. And it involves loving as Jesus loves, living as he teaches us, giving ourselves in service to one another, making sacrifices willingly, being kind and forgiving when we can, even toward our enemies, even when it's hard, and not demanding anything in return. Jesus talks about keeping his commandments, and we recognize commandments are obligations. And sometimes they're not easy to keep and can even be painful to keep. But Jesus also makes another promise that his spirit will remain with us to help us keep those commandments and help us in every need. We will constantly enjoy the presence of God in a way that is personal, intimate, and uplifting, even greater than when we had Jesus in our midst. But we will experience the love of God more in our minds and hearts than through any external evidence. And so Jesus says the world cannot accept the Spirit because it neither sees nor knows him. 
So it's an internal experience for us. And God doesn't spoil us. He doesn't give us everything that we want. And he might even take away things that we cling to for security and comfort, such as money or health, for some good purpose. We might find ourselves greatly humbled in the midst of this. The world might see our condition and scoff, saying, where is your God? I thought he was good. I thought he loved you. We might ourselves even say, God, why have you abandoned me? But God's love is true. And he's always offering us the very best gifts, most especially himself. And we have to know his mercy if we are to be merciful toward others. So we must know our need for that. We must know our weakness. Keeping the commandments, as Jesus says, begins with understanding God's love for us. God is good and we depend on him every day. And so we owe him something. We are to put him first in our lives, strive to please him, use his name reverently, and set aside time for him. That's what the first three of the Ten Commandments are all about. Then we have the fourth commandment, honor your mother and your father. This is the first one that has to do with loving people, not just God. And it implies we are to especially love those who have provided for us as parents. They come first among the people we are to love and honor. We should also honor teachers, benefactors, caregivers, anyone who's been like a parent to us. And connecting that with the first three commandments, can we see the love of others for us as a participation in God's love, as helping to shape the better parts of who we are and who we want to be? This being Mother's Day, let us think especially of those who have been mothers to us, who have nurtured us in some way, protected us, fought for us, sacrificed for us, taught and disciplined us, shared in our suffering, and lifted us up when we were down. <clears throat> mothers do a great deal for us, and it shows very much the love of God in our midst. We honor our mothers rightly with gratitude and devotion. We are also to imitate what is best in their love for us, just as we are commanded to imitate Jesus. We are to love as circumstances require, and to especially love those who can most benefit from our attention, whether they are kind to us or not, grateful or not wise or foolish, to always remember the love of a mother or a father. God teaches us to love truly as family, as we would want to be loved, and as all people need to be loved. And although we fall short, God loves us more than we can ever see or feel or understand, and he reminds us of that. Furthermore, if we ask him, God will make our hearts more like his, able to love more easily, more joyfully, in whatever way is right. And in that loving, experience the very same joy that God experiences in loving us. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, 
consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, to the life of the world. Lord, we confidently lift up our prayers to you who speak to us and support us by your power. That Pope Francis and all our bishops, priests, and deacons may boldly proclaim Christ to the world and rightly guide his church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders and influencers will successfully seek to break down barriers of exclusion and build up their communities in loving service and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have the role of mother, may they be honored as God commands and supported in their selfless labors and sacrifices. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have suffered the loss of children or are separated from them, may they be comforted and strengthened in faith and hope we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the lonely, the sick, the afflicted, those suffering from abuse or neglect, and those who are held captive in one way or another, may they come to experience genuine love, healing, and freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead will find welcome and the fullness of life in the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, in your great mercy, hear our prayers. Those we speak, those we offer in our hearts, and those written in our churches and carried to you by your holy angels. Grant all that we need and keep us in your peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us ask the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom Jesus honors as his mother and our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> may our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, Robert, our Regional Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. If you love me, keep my commandments, says the Lord, and I will ask the Father, and he will send you another paraclete to abide with you forever. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few minutes. I have a few special announcements to share. First, thank you all of you for your participation in our Holy Mass this morning. And a reminder that we have Holy Communion for those unable to be here in person, but who can come afterwards for communion. We'll have that in our parking lot from 845 till 915. And I thank our Eucharistic ministers, our lector, our ushers, and everybody who has helped with the Mass. We have a few confirmation cornerstone projects that are still underway. The confirmations are in the fall, in October, and the cornerstone projects are service projects that are meant to help with the preparations of the students. And one of the ones that was just introduced and will only be with us a short time is for Katie's Closet. It's a collection supporting a nonprofit that goes into schools and helps kids get essential goods like clothing and toiletries. So you might find a, a donation box or a collection box for, for that, for Katie's Closet, at one of the entrances. Uh, please consider contributing to that and to anything else that's uh, happening as well. You can find announcements in the bulletin for uh, these projects also. As always, you can see everything that's happening in our collaborative through our bulletin, our website, and our weekly emails. So I have a special announcement to share. I've been announcing it in pieces in my bulletin letter. So I've been a priest for 13 years as of this month. This is my 13th birthday this month. And uh, 13 years isn't a lot of time to be a priest, but in that time I've experienced a lot of change. For example, I've had four assignments and each one of them was in a different region of the archdiocese, and most of them were in large collaboratives. I've actually served 10 parishes and almost as many pastors. <laughs> so a lot of change. But in all of that, in those very diverse experiences and sometimes very challenging ones, I've grown a lot, and I've tried to serve the church in whatever way was needed. And when I was sent here, when it was time for me to leave Salem, it was under some unusual circumstances. There had to be a lot of pivoting. First, my assignment there was extended, and then uh, had to find a new assignment for me. And this was open. But they told me it probably wouldn't be long. And so I, I think that they just wanted me to be prepared, just in case I had to move again. But I'm so happy that I got to stay here for six years. That's half of my priesthood that I've been in one place here. And I've stayed with you through a lot, through the leadership of two pastors, through a pandemic, and through many little changes along the way. But now it's time for another change. Cardinal Sean has asked me to serve the church in a new role helping a new collaborative to implement the Disciples in Mission pastoral plan. That's the plan that we've been doing here for nine years now. So my last day here will be June 30th. Starting July 1st, I will be pastor 
of Our Lady of Good Counsel Parish, which serves the communities of Methuen and Lawrence. I'm looking forward to this new assignment with gratitude and hope. It's a good assignment. But at the same time, of course, I'm very sad to be leaving. I don't want to say goodbye. I love you all very much, and I'll miss you very much. We still have at least six weeks together, but I'll be counting those days and treasuring them. So what's next for this collaborative, St. Jude and St. Edward? Cardinal Sean has appointed a new pastor for you, also starting July 1st. And that new pastor will be Father Brian O'Hanlon. I'm still getting to know who he is, but uh, I'm aware that like me, he became a priest after working in the computer systems sector for a while. And he's been serving as parochial vicar in the collaborative parish of St. Mary of the Sacred Heart in Lynn. And he also sometimes offers mass on Catholic TV. I believe he's a regular on the schedule. So you can actually see him now and kind of get a taste of uh, what he might be like. In the coming weeks, I'll be meeting with him and with our staff to prepare for the transition of leadership. Unfortunately, there's not going to be a second priest coming to the collaborative, at least at this time. There's just not enough active priests available. And that reality is going to require some long-term changes to the mass schedule that we haven't quite figured out yet, but we're discussing it and thinking about it. But for now, there'll be a temporary summer schedule that will go into effect Memorial Day weekend, two weeks away. And this is to allow us to meet our current obligations for uh, mass offerings, but also to allow me and others to take some time off, including on weekends. We always reduce the mass schedule starting Memorial Day weekend and then again in July. This we're doing a little bit differently. So what we have for now, just for June, is the Saturday Confessions will move to 3 p.m. at St. Edward in the library. Then we'll have 4 p.m. Mass as we do now at St. Edward. And the 5 p.m. Mass at St. Jude will move to 5.30 to allow some extra time so that we can cover everything better. And this Mass will remain put. We'll still have this 8 a.m. Mass on Sunday mornings. The 9 a.m. Mass at St. Edward will move to 9.30. At this time, uh, there won't be other Sunday Masses. Uh, that's just for the month of June. We'll see what we can do July, August, and then into September. We expect to return to a, something of a normal schedule. So changes are hard. And please be assured that any changes will continue to be planned carefully, discussed, including with you, and announced ahead of time. I have to say I'm forever grateful for the ways that you've supported me in my time here and for all the ways that I could serve you as a priest of Jesus Christ. In the months ahead, I ask that we keep each other in prayer with confidence in God's love for his church. His love never fails. In all the changes I've been through, all the different places I've been, I've seen that. I've seen God bring about wonderful transformations through humble means and through many different changes, even the ones that are difficult. And so let us trust that God will continue to do great work for us and that he will reward our faith, our steadfast support for one another, and our patience. Thank you, and may God bless you always. Now I invite all of those of you who are mothers, uh, whether biologically or in some other way, please stand for a blessing.
Loving God as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women, that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Let us all stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And one more announcement. Uh, Ascension Thursday is this week. So we'll have on Ascension Thursday the 9 a.m. Mass as usual here at St. Jude. But uh, we'll have a vigil Mass at St. Edward the day before at 7 p.m. God bless you.